group together some of the strongest, toughest, most resilient beings in Skyrim and what do you get? An epic brotherhood of warriors or a guild of meatheads? who have a combined IQ of 82. The companions in Skyrim lie somewhere in the middle. Although undoubtedly great warriors, unfortunately it seems like a requirement to join is having a diminished brain capacity. But more than this, plot holes, the decision to worship her scene, their willingness to let anyone join, these things make Yisgrimor's heirs look idiotic. The player is allowed to join the companions with no test of skill. For a band of supposedly elite fighters, it's surprising that they won't only accept distinguished recruits. There cannot be such a deficit of good warriors in Skyrim that they can literally accept anyone off the street. But apparently so, the Dragonborn is allowed to join with little opposition, the only test being to hit Vilkas a few times after you've already been inducted. Moreover, it seems that the inner circle don't check whether those they recruit are warriors. The protagonist is able to use magic throughout the entire quest line with no repercussions whatsoever. Equally, one could be an assassin and seemingly the companions wouldn't bat an eyelid. The companions thus suffers when it comes to authenticity because there are no checks that force the player to actually conform to the companion warrior class. More generally, Skyrim suffers because you're able to join every single guild which necessarily comes at the expense of others. How can you be an assassin in the Dark Brotherhood and a companion at the same time? A more immersive approach would have been to make some guilds mutually exclusive if you can't join the Imperials if you're a Stormcloak, why should you be able to join the companions if you're the Archmage of the College of Winterhold? True, if this approach was implemented in Skyrim and the future Elder Scrolls 6, it would prevent the player from experiencing each and every guild in one playthrough, but it would also add to the game's replayability, whilst contributing to immersion and authenticity considerably. The Circle is a sub-faction comprised of the senior members of the Companions. Although originally envisioned as a group that would provide an example to the younger Companions, over time it evolved to become a werewolf cult. According to Kodlak White Mane's journal, Turfig, a previous harbinger, was responsible for introducing lycanthropy to the guild. He did so because the Glenmoral witches promised that if the companions hunted in Hercene's name, they would in turn be granted great power. In the time of Skyrim, there are two opposing camps on lycanthropy. Kodlak and Vulcus view it as a curse, whilst Skure and Ayla see it a blessing. It is truly insane that Turfig thought becoming a werewolf was a good idea. Anyone who has any general knowledge knows that werewolves are bound to her scene, and when they die they are forced to hunt with him for all eternity. Compared with other afterlifes, such as Sovereign Guard where you fight and drink for eternity, or the Imperial Dreamsleeve, this sounds like a horrible way to spend your time until the end of the Cowper. Also, surely becoming a werewolf contradicts the very ethos of the Companions. Founded by Yisgrimor as a group of battle-hardened warriors who embody what it means to be a true Nord, becoming mindless, bloodthirsty beasts seems to jar with the idea of being a respectable, measured, an honourable warrior. The Skyforge manufactures and maintains the weapons and armour of the Companions. The current blacksmith, Jorlund Greymane, is ageing. Visibly an old man, he has a couple of decades left at most. Put simply, what will the Companions do once he is dead? I know that the position of Skyforge blacksmith is occupied purportedly by the best blacksmith in Skyrim, which has typically been a Greymane for the past few generations, and thus there would be someone to claim his place. However, the Skyforge is also unique, an ancient construction it requires specialist training to use. There's no evidence that Yorlond has taught anyone how to use this forge, so even if someone takes his place, it may be that they aren't able to craft weapons and armour to the previously high standard. Realistically, the companions should have their own resident blacksmith who apprentices a younger person in the guild to eventually replace them. As Yorlund lies outside the companions, he can't be forced to do this. Finally, the companion's constituent members have a combined IQ of about 82. In Farkas's case, an ice brain as his colleagues describe him, it seems that the development of his brain was sacrificed for that of his muscles. Although a skilled fighter, his monotone, childlike speech speaks to his lacklustre 
intellectual capacity. Similarly, there's Ayla the Huntress. From a long line of female companions, she's respected and a skilled killer, but seemingly not an adept at politics or diplomacy. For instance, she comments that she's jealous of the soldiers in the Civil War because they're stealing all the glory. It's unclear who she'd fight for, but nonetheless, Codlack Whitemane's policy of neutrality seems most astute. If they commit to a side and it loses, then the companion's reputation would be forever tarnished. By allying themselves with one camp, they'd anger the supporters of the other. And as an organisation reliant on the patronage of Skyrim's people, it would be a terrible idea to join the Civil War. You might remember I did a video on why Codlack Whitemane is a genius, and I think that's true. I think he is the exception among the companions. But in a way, his position speaks to how intellectually diminished this organisation is. They have to have someone who's moderately smart as Harbinger to ensure their survival. If they didn't and they were truly a collective ruled democratically or by the highest constituent members, then I believe they would be screwed. All in all, the Companions could have been a better thought out organisation. The test to join is superficial, and the ability of the player to enrol, even if they're a mage or an assassin, is immersion breaking. The other aforementioned issues are more trivial, and in some cases actually fit with the story. For instance, although I think the decision to become werewolves was stupid, I recognise that it's important for the sake of the plot. Anyway, please let me know what you think about the Companions. Are they a band of honourable warriors or a conglomerate of idiotic brawlers?